Welcome back to another YouTube video guys. So today what we are doing on the Mini Cooper is fitting the new brakes. So I'm going to show you a picture now of them. I've already done the right hand side, uh, the left hand side sorry. Um, I did this first just to make sure everything fitted correctly before I started filming the video. So I saved the other side, of uh, the driver's side. The wheels are absolutely outstandingly messy at the minute. Um, so we've gone for MTEC C hook discs and we've got EBC yellow stuff pads and we just cleaned the, uh, the caliper up there. So that's what the brakes are going to look like. They're going to look like that from, from that. The plain boring pads and discs, now we're going upgraded. So the tools you will need for this job are new discs, new pads, obviously. It's a very simple job. You need a torque wrench, mini breaker bar, big breaker bar with an 18mm. Uh, that's just for me to get my wheel off. Copper grease, wire brush to obviously clean it up. Brake grease for redoing the sliders. Brake cleaner, bit of WD-40 possibly. Bit of Loctite. I got these pliers, I'll show you why in a minute. 13mm, this is 17mm to obviously adapt for my brake, um, for my wheel nuts. Maybe a possibly pliers to get this little spring out. And then I think that's a six mil, I believe, on an Allen key. And obviously, possibly this. Well, there are all the tools you need. Spare axle stand to rest the caliper on. I'll put a link down in the description below as well. So yeah, that's exactly all the tools and stuff that you need. Um, what I'll do now is I'm gonna show you step by step of each bit that you need to do. Where to clean, where to grease. One thing I must say before you start this job, you have to open up your uh, reservoir. So if you don't know how to get to this, there's one 10 mil, which I've decided to nearly break. Brilliant. Um, and two little clips in here. And obviously you take your reservoir cap off. If you don't do that when you're pushing the piston back, what we'll do is you could possibly blow a line or something like that. So yeah. So to do this job, all you literally need to do is, there's a nut there at the top, and there's one identical at the bottom. The reason why I said you need them pliers is you want to put the pliers on, can't even, this is so annoying. You want to put the pliers on there, on the, uh, the head of it, because if you can see, it is, it's a, I think it's a 17, but you need, a fit, you need to either grind your spanner down to make it thin, or you need to buy a special tool, but because this is locked onto it, you can use these pliers to get away with it. So you get pliers on there, 30 mil on the back, take them both off, and that will literally remove the majority of the caliper. But before you, I advise you do that, <laughs> I forgot about it and everyone always forgets about this, you need to crack this little git off. So that is obviously the 6mm Allen key, so I'll try that now. So to get that off without it spinning with both wheels on the ground, simple trick, stick your pliers in the vented part of the disc and obviously as you turn it around that will lock off on the caliper. Happy days. I was worried then that I nearly rounded this, but so what you want to do is you want to leave it in there a little bit. So just get it loose and then just nip it back up. So now all I'm going to do is move on to getting both of these undone. Very simple this bit, but sometimes it can be a pain in the ass. So as I was saying, 13 mil on the back, make sure it's on the left seat. What you want to do is you want to try and crack it off first to get the whole the slider movement. You want the whole thing to spin. And then that's when you come in with these um, pullers pliers. And you just want to do one at a time. So you want to take this one all the way out. As that comes out. Place them to the side. This is where you need your axle stand. Put it on a few planks of wood. And now all you've got to do is just wiggle the caliper off. So on your driver's side, there's, there is not a um, pad sensor. But on your passenger side, just imagine this being all the opposite way around. There's a little pad sensor in there. So I didn't realize. I think there's one on the front axle and one on the rear. Um, yeah, so all you need to do is literally pop it out, 
put push the cable over to the side and then there'll be a little spring in there which obviously needs to take that out to put into your new pads but I didn't realize there was one on this side so now all it is simply just get your old pads just pull them out push this one the other way since they are still got loads of life on but upgrade life hey um, so now what you want to do is you want to push because this bit can be a bit be a bit of a pain in the ass you want to rotate it That's nice and secure. So you want to rotate this one to get to these two 18 mils. These 18 mils are quite tight. They're only 110 newton meters, but if you have it like trying to use the bar with the wheel straight, you're not really going to get much leverage. So this literally that's all it is now to get this off. So two 18 mils, one here, one there. I've got the big breaker bar for this because they can be a pain. Whatever you do, make sure you do left and loosely on this. I know it's simple, but when the bolts are way around, some people decide to think it's still. <laughs> you have to start tightening it instead of loosening it. You've just got to make sure you think these can stretch and you don't want to be doing that. So you simply just un unscrew there. Alright, so that's your caliper hanger. Now, what you want to do. Use your little 6mm Allen key to get this out. This is what I mean, if you didn't do this at first with the caliper, well at least with the hanger, hanger on, you're going to have big problems. So that's the disc off. Give this a quick spray with brake cleaner. Clean up the mating surface with a wire brush. With all that grit coming off here. Quick spray with brake cleaner again. And then use a rag. To wipe all the excess off. So this is how these are going to go because the caliper sits here so obviously they look like a C going into it. So what you want to do is, is give these a clean. You want to do the rear side first. Just small but nice layer of brake cleaner. Same again, get your nice rag, wipe it all off. These come with like a, a transport oil on them to stop them from rusting. Um, you want to do this like maybe once or twice. Nice generous layer and a good wipe. So you don't matter about touching the front of your disc yet, you can do that. That's not massive drama. And then you just want to whip this back in here, this little bad boy. This obviously snip it up again. And then this will sort of self-center itself. This is meant to be 11 newton meters, but we'll tighten that one up in a minute. But I'm just going to nip it up for now. So now I'll rebuilding this part of it. What you do is literally these sliders just pop out. And you see all the horrible gunky grease on it. It actually looks pretty clean with the camera. Just get simply get a wipe off and then just apply. A nice even amount on both sides might not necessarily matter and then just rub it in with your finger also try and spread it around as even as possible make sure you get a tiny bit on the end and then just simply insert it back in until the rubber seal pops back over do it on both ones so simply just push it back in and that's it for that so all I'm going to do now is just give this an extra bit of a clean because obviously I've got them painted blue and I just want to tidy them up a little bit. Simply just to line it up. Just put one of them in about three quarters of the way to hold it. And get your other one. And then simply just a tight, tiny bit of lock. Got to close it. That's all I'm putting on, just a tiny amount. So I'll have to focus in on it. And then 110. Beautiful. So 
tight into the clip. Check both of them again. Before I forget, I'm just going to clean the front surface of the uh, disc. Then what you could do is this is why you need the master cylinder open. Do a brake reservoir, and then simply clamp it back. I'm gonna have to move the tripod out of the way to do this because it's a little bit harder than I was expecting just now. You want to push it all the way, well, all the way back without doing damage to the seal. So as you can see, there's the seal on there. You don't want to do any damage to that. So you just push it all the way back and it won't go anymore. So the one with the big lip on it on the top is the one to go towards the inner side of the car. And this one is to go to the outer edge. But what I'm going to do is, is just put a small dollop of copper grease in here. small dollop in the top bit on both sides so copper grease is fantastic for stopping squealing but these brakes they will squeal for the first couple hundred miles and then sometimes they can squeal after that and then also what you want to do is whack a little bit on the spring I know you just put it on there and all these edges so with the pads it's literally as simple as just lining them up and pushing on the springs. Try and get them in. It's a bit hard to do with a camera in the way. Right, I'm going to have to move the camera out of the way to do this. <laughs> so it's literally as simple as getting this spring here. It was just a bit tricky to put in first and then the spring down there in that hole. That's why I put a bit of copper grease on there. So same again as that one. Simply grease up your uh, little parts of your pad. So put it on here. All right, that front one was being a pain in the ass as well. Because <laughs> if you don't get these little black tabs in correctly, these obviously come fitted to the pads. They'll, they'll pull off. And then these little bits of the springs don't like sitting in, so all you need to do is make sure they're sat in correctly. You'll be able to see it from both sides of the pads. You can just see it there and there. So anyway, there are the pads in now. So the next step to do is, instead of doing what people do and absolutely slapping copper grease all over the pad, what I like to do is give get a little bit of brake cleaner on your rag and just go around the piston surface. Same again, bit of brake cleaner on your rag again and just get on these two surfaces here, on these flat parts. That'll just clean up all the excess brake cleaner. Oh, that's dirty. And now, this is the most efficient way to do it. Get a small bit of copper grease just run your finger around this outside surface at uh, the the little piston surface nice amount on both of these these two flat surfaces so what these will do is if you just get it on the right place it stops you um getting loads all over your pads and then it'll stop loads of crap stick into it Slip. straight on 
So the black pads that. Ooh, I say that. Oh, there you go. That slide will push that a little bit more than the other one. So there we go. So that's that. So um, what you need to do is get your little your little bolt. Put a small bit of matte copper. Um, Matt, I not luck on this one, even though it comes with like the old stuff still a bit on there, but you always reapply. Obviously it's a small bolt, so you don't need an absolute killing. So a small amount of nut lock on it. And then just wiggle the front of this caliper around until it starts feeding through. So these two here, as I was um, saying earlier, they go to 35, so 35 newton meters. I'll whack all these down in the description below. Um, you obviously can easily read it. So you obviously want to put both of these back in. You lift them up by hand. Get the torque wrench. Set this to 35 newton meters. So 35 newton meters. You can get away with doing this without holding these two clamps now, because obviously it's got tight enough so it can self-hold. So there you go. Just get a little wiggle. You'll see the wiggle anyway because the piston's not uh, compressed. So, so obviously give it all a check to make sure everything's tight. So as I was saying, recap the big bolts that the caliper hanger sits on at 110 newton meters. 35 for these two, and that little one at the front is meant to be 11. What this will do is compress the piston. So now you can just make sure you wibble it with by your hand, and there you go, nothing. So, that is it. That's how you do the front brakes on a Mini Cooper. So what I'm gonna do now is just clean up the uh, brakes with a bit of brake cleaner again. Oh God, I could tripod's doing me nothing so I can't even get a good angle yeah so just clean it all up again put the wheel back on the wheel torque is 145 newton meters happy days so now we've moved on to the rear brakes I've already done the other side to get a bit of a feel for it so same again it's pretty simple this rear right has the um, sensor so all you need to do is literally pull that out undo this bolt here same again with that one undo this bolt here and then you need an external torque socket which was at E14 I believe let me just find it which is that shape so it's an external torque so um, that's how you get the, the what's it called off it's the exact same principle just make sure you got the handbrake released um, so I'm probably not going to film these bits I'll just do each step by step again to show you what to do literally just pulled that out with the pliers um, as you can see, it's a little bit dirty, and then this is what I was on about the retaining clip for it. That how it goes in like that. So I've just pulled that out as well. It's important not to lose that because obviously that won't keep this part retained. Then, so yeah. Anyway, now just undo these two. So now I've got them two out. It's literally as simple as wiggling the uh, old caliper off, which can be a little bit tricky because the handbrake cable's still connected. Um, and now we're trying to show you properly. It's them external ones. So there's one at the bottom down there. Uh, I think that is the top one actually. And then there's one at the bottom. These can be a bit tricky. The one I had to smack out with the hammer for ages. So I'm gonna crack on with that. So I've got these two back ones out. Just smash them out quickly. Um, but I forgot to mention, obviously, just pull the pads out. Same again as the front. These ones got like these little retaining clips. Try and leave it on there. Whoops. I forgot I had the caliper rested. Caliper should be all right because it's mounted on the handbrake cable. So, same again. Take this little, uh, what's it called, Allen key out. And then obviously hit, the hit it. Bear with me. As I was saying, just hit it loads. Look at all the corrosion. Someone has tried to put copper slip on it before, but obviously not enough. So yeah. Just hit it loads, look at how much, oh my god. This is why the other one on the other side was absolutely wedged in. It's like someone had put the whole bolt with nut lock all the way over it, which is not good. So I'm gonna clean all this up. You wanna use a brake rewind tool for this. It makes it a lot easier. You don't have to, 
but I find it better to do it because of obviously it's good practice for when you move on to other cars. So, so now I've rewound the caliper. I don't think you can actually just push it in, I think you've got to rewind it, I was having a bit of problem then. Um, so yeah, simply put the new disc on, obviously with copper slip on here, put the new disc on, put the retainer bolt back in and nip it up. So now it's going to be the same again with this caliper, pull the sliders out, re-grease them, pop them back in. Uh, give it a general clean up with the uh, brake cleaner and a bit of rag, just to get most of the brake dust off, and then a tiny bit of Loctite onto the bolts, and then re-put them back into the same place. Sorry if it feels like I'm rushing, I'm running out of daylight in the carport. So, as I was saying, I've got them too tight. They're up to, I think it was 100 newton meters, I can't remember. Um, they're an absolute pain in the ass though, because we just are. Obviously, re grease these. All I'm gonna have to do now is just clean these up a little bit, put the new, uh, clean the front of the disc, because you can still see the oil. So, as I was saying earlier, it's the same as the front, the fat bit goes at the back. And then obviously all that, so they've got a little bit of copper grease in all them bits. So now I've just got to put copper grease on the piston and these two arms here. So it's simple, I put the little clip back on, push that back in there, do these up to 30 newton meters on the rear. Yeah, so that's the whole job complete at the back. All I'm doing is pump the brake pedal, brake pedal a few times, obviously make sure it grips. And then um, I will obviously pull the handbrake, put the wheel back on and then that is the brake pads on the rear done. Like I was saying, sorry about uh, the light getting low. So I've obviously had to speed it up. It's exactly the same as the front, obviously. It's just the calipers on the other side and you've got a handbrake cable, but you just leave the handbrake off, so therefore it's okay. So what I'll do is I'll whack the wheel up now, get the car back on the floor and I'll get back to you after. Whatever you do, do not forget to put this back on before you go driving. I haven't done that obviously, but that's why I put it near the driver's door so I wouldn't forget. Well, after an eventful uh, couple of hours, it was the rear left that was my problem child with it. Um, I've managed to do them all. Obviously, sorry for making it feel rushed at the end with the, obviously the back ones. I am obviously ran out of light. It's not dark outside, it was just dark where I was working. So that was obviously the main problem why. Um, so yeah, like I'd like to say thanks again. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Any questions, pop them down in the comments uh, box below. Super easy job. Obviously it's just time consuming because there's four wheel stations. Um, but yeah, but massive, makes the car look massively different. Now it's time for a good clean and obviously bed the pads in. These are the end results of the brakes. I think they look absolutely smart. And obviously the back, baby C hooks with yellow stuffs, so as I was saying, I've got to run all these in now. Right, like I say, thanks again for watching, um, and the next install, it might be the same, but on a Golf R with an electronic handbrake, that's gonna be a bit of a different bit of fun, but I need to go and get my hair cut now, so like I say, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace, ciao for now.